I'm Mary Allison Brown from ReflectingRelationships.com. I'm here today to introduce you to the ACE study. Let's get started. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to what's been called the largest public health crisis of our time. It's the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study, commonly called the ACEs Study. The ACEs Study is incredibly important for understanding how experiences in childhood can continue to affect us throughout the rest of our lives. I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about the history of the study and how it came to be. In the mid-1990s, there was a doctor, Dr. Vince Felitti, who was working at Kaiser Permanente in Southern California, and he was running a weight loss clinic. And Dr. Felitti started to notice a trend that when women were successfully losing the weight, which was their goal at the start of the program, they were dropping out of the program, never to be heard from again. So he started to do some research, and what he found was really surprising at the time. All of the women who were dropping out of the study when they were successfully losing weight had some type of sexual abuse or sexual trauma in their background. So for these women, the weight itself really wasn't the problem. The weight was merely a symptom of a much bigger problem. And so these women reported that when they started losing the weight, they actually felt really vulnerable, really scared, and fearful, and they felt like they might be victimized again. So they started to get really uncomfortable with not having that weight, which was their body's way of sort of protecting them from future victimization. So one woman said to Dr. Felitti, overweight is unseen, and that's how I need to be. And that's a direct quote that kind of sums up the experiences for many of these women. So Dr. Felitti started thinking on a broader scale and wondering about how our experiences in childhood continue to affect our health, our high-risk health habits, and our social outcomes later on in our lives, even into our adulthood and throughout the rest of our lives. So Dr. Felitti teamed up with Dr. Robert Anda from the CDC. And together they created what's now known as the ACEs study. ACEs stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences. And in the ACEs study, Dr. Felitti and Dr. Anda studied how 10 specific adverse childhood experiences affect health and social outcomes throughout the lifespan. So the 10 adverse childhood experiences that they studied are in no way in intended to be an inclusive list of all possible adversity a child could face. But the 10 things that they chose to study were what they had the most data available about at the time. So they're divided into two categories. Five of them are things that can happen directly to a child, types of abuse and neglect. And the other five are categories of experience that happen within a child's immediate family and household. So the five types of abuse are physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, and physical neglect and emotional neglect. The other five categories of experience are things that happen within the child's home, and they are witnessing violence against the mother or another adult in the household, having a parent or another adult in the household who is incarcerated or goes to prison, having a parent or another adult in the household with mental health issues or suicide attempts, having a parent or another adult in the household battling substance abuse or addiction issues, and finally, loss of a parent due to abandonment or death. So those are the 10 ACEs that they studied. The way that they gathered the information for the study was by, was by bringing in over 17,000 participants and completing full physical exams, lab work, blood work, and intense over 200 question questionnaires that asked them about all kinds of childhood experiences as well as high-risk health habits in adulthood and social outcomes, things like unemployment, level of education, income, housing, all of that stuff. So they gathered tons and tons and tons of data for their study. And the participants in the study agreed to be in the study throughout their lives. So they were able to continue to monitor health and social data throughout these participants' lives. It's important to note that the participants in the original ACEs study were not exactly a representative sample of society as a whole. 75% of participants in the study were white, 11.2% were Hispanic or Latino, 
and only 4.5% were African American. It's also important to know that the participants in the study were pretty much mostly middle class. All of them had health insurance through Kaiser Permanente, because that's where the study started. And so they don't really truly represent the uninsured and underinsured parts of our population. So with that in mind, take the results with a grain of salt. So they gathered all this health data and they decided to give each participant what's called an ACE score. And you'll be hearing that again. So for each category of the 10 categories of adversity that a child experienced, any time from birth to age 18, they would get a score of one. So if a child experienced physical abuse one time, they would get a one. If they experienced chronic physical abuse for five years, they would still get a one. So the ACE score can be any number between zero and 10, and no higher than 10. So what did they find? First of all, they found that adverse childhood experiences are surprisingly common. Nearly two thirds of participants, 64%, had experienced at least one ACE sometime before the age of 18. And of those participants who'd experienced one ACE, 86% had experienced more than one ACE. So it's really common that these things come together. Risk factors come together, ACEs come together. And you can kind of think about that. If a family has a parent who is battling a drug addiction, it's much more likely that there might be violence in that family. Um, and it is more likely that someone may be incarcerated in that family. And so these risk factors cluster together and you can kind of see how that would happen. So 12.5% of participants had an ACE score of four or more. And that's important because four or more ACEs is considered a threshold at which outcomes get significantly worse over the course of the lifespan. Higher ACE scores have been associated with tons of negative outcomes throughout the lifespan, including more adoption of high-risk health behaviors like smoking, IV drug use, and alcoholism, Higher rates of victimization, so someone who has been victimized in childhood is more likely to be a victim as an adult, and negative health outcomes. So higher ACE scores have been associated with everything from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease to ischemic heart disease, depression, risk of miscarriage, um, liver disease, as well as social outcomes like lower employment rates, financial stress, and even a lifespan that can be significantly less depending on the number of ACEs a person has. I think the ACEs study is one of the most important things for everyone to know about because it's really important for us to consider how our own childhood affects us now as adults and also so important to know that if you're a parent, you are the person who gets to decide how many of these things your child experiences. So you should feel really empowered that you get to make that choice for your child and you can choose that they will have a low ACE score. And that's really something that you have the power to do is to prevent your child from having a lot of ACEs in their life.